the ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to um, create a one world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers, where, and, and they're doing it in sections. The, the European currency, the euro, and, and the European constitution is one part of it. Now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union. Eric, can you be specific about when you met Rockefeller, how it happened in these discussions? I met Rockefeller through a female attorney I knew who called me up one day and said, uh, one of the Rockefellers would like to meet you. I had made a video called Mad as Hell, and uh, he'd seen the video and wanted to meet me and knew I was running for governor of Nevada. So sure, I'd love to meet him. And I met him, and I liked him, and uh, uh, he was a very, very smart man. And uh, we used to talk and share ideas and thoughts. And um, he's the one who told me uh, 11 months before 9-11 ever happened that there was going to be an event. Never told him what the event was going to be. But there was going to be an event. And out of that event, uh, we were going to invade Afghanistan to run uh, pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We were going to invade Iraq, you know, to take over the oil fields, establish a base in the Middle East, and make it all part of the New World Order. And we'd go after Chavez in Venezuela. And uh, sure enough, later 9-11 happened. And I remember he was telling me how, <laughs> how you're going to see soldiers looking in caves for people in, in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all these places. And, it's, and there's going to be this war on terror, of which there's no real enemy. And the whole thing is a giant hoax, you know, but it's a way for the government to take over the American people. He told you it was going to be a hoax. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no question. He says, there's going to be war on terror. And he's laughing. There's no... <laughs> Who are we fighting? I mean, why do you think 9-11 happened and then nothing's happened since then? Do you think that our security is so great here that these people who pulled off 9-11, who were able to, can't knock down another plane? Come on, it's ridiculous. Endless war without, without any real enemy. That you can never, so you can never define a winner. And, and uh, did he say that it's going to be perfect because you can't define an enemy? It just goes yeah, on and on? Yeah, because you can't define a winner. There's no one who has on to beat, so it goes on and on forever. And they can do whatever they want. They scare the hell out of the American public. Look, this whole war on terror is a fraud. It's a farce. It's very difficult to say it out loud because people are intimidated against saying it. Because if you say it, they want to make you into a nutcase. Let's but, the truth, but the truth has to be, the truth has to come out. That's why I'm doing this interview. The fact of the matter happens to be that the whole war on terror is a fraud. It's a farce. The end there's a war going on in Iraq because we invaded Iraq. And people over there fighting, you know. But the war on terror, it's a joke, you know. And until we discover what really happened on 9-11... And who was responsible for 9-11? Because that's where the war on terror emanates from. That's where it comes from. It was 9-11 that allowed this war on terror to begin. And until we get to the bottom root of 9-11, the truth of 9-11, we'll never know about the war on terror. Now let's watch the government add insult to injury to the people of New Orleans. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. That happened today in this wealthy neighborhood where homeowners had armed themselves to protect their mansions. <laughs> Residents were handcuffed on the ground. In the end, police took their weapons but let them stay in their homes. Wasn't that kind and generous of the government to allow people to stay in their own homes? How thoughtful. Of course, they couldn't defend themselves from looters. For many of the police and guard troops, it is an uncomfortable job to do this in an American city. You never expect to do this in your own country. Walking up and down these streets, you don't, you don't want to think about the stuff that you're going to have to do. We are losing our right to property. Uh, the, the government is getting more pretext to seize it through, uh, using uh, you know, uh, the power to confiscate it with eminent domain. Uh, the asset forfeiture laws are proliferated. It's easier for the prosecutors to come in and make an accusation against you and confiscate your property even though they have no evidence that you've done anything wrong. Guilt or innocence doesn't really matter that much because it's very convenient for the government. Unfortunately, what is being sold to the American people today as Americanism, if you peel off the label, you find so much similarity 
to what we were fighting against when we were fighting communism and Nazism and fascism. The government's now putting a national ID card together and they want checkpoints. We will be carrying our papers and they have recommended there be checkpoints uh, throughout the country. Isn't that what Nazi Germany did that everybody in America was against? Papers, please. May I see your papers? May you see your papers? I don't think I have them on me. In that case, we'll have to ask you to come along. Wait, it's possible that, uh, yes. Here we are. These papers expired three weeks ago. You have to come along. Halt! Halt! In the new legislation, the, the National ID card is in it. It takes three or four pages to describe, and it will be connected with our driver's licenses. The states will be instructed on exactly what they have to do. Social security numbers will be used. Some type of a physical proof, such as fingerprints or retinal prints, have to be on it. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement? There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that, mark my words, before your tenure is over. Homeland Security folks, uh, the Department of Defense and others have uh, expressed an interest in being able to more closely monitor the U.S. populace. And one way to do that, of course, would be being able to determine who buys what and uh, where they take those things. Radio waves can travel through walls, they can travel through wood, they can travel through the things we normally rely on to protect our privacy. Uh, for example, your purse, your backpack, your pocket, anything you're wearing or carrying. Kraft Philadelphia cream cheese has been tagged with RFID and sold to consumers, as have uh, Mach 3 razor products and other Gillette razor products, without the knowledge of the consumer. One of the tiny chips could actually even be the, the, the dot on the letter I on the back of the fine print on a package that you purchase. They were talking about having reader devices in every airport, on every bus, on every train, on every port, on every dock. One of the most worrisome applications of RFID are proposals to put them into cash, meaning that you would be able to track every banknote, where it had been, who it had been issued to, and create, in essence, an audit trail. That would, that would um, essentially take away the anonymity of cash that we now enjoy today. The ATM machine itself, as the money was, came through the, the roller device, would be, would be reading each number. And they would know who you are because, of course, you identify yourself at the bank before you take money out. And down the road, when you go to pay um, at a major retailer, it would also be possible for them, as they're putting the money into the cash drawer, to simply feed it through a little reader device. It would go in, it would uh, tag that number and transfer possession from Aaron Russo, say, to Walmart. Once everything you do is tied down to a single number and there is no longer the ability to pay with cash, then all it takes to render you a non-citizen is to simply turn that chip off. You will no longer be able to really participate in any function in society, including by food. So through the implementation of the Federal Reserve System, the American citizen has gone from being a private individual who had real money, gold, in his possession that was private to a citizen who has no privacy because all money is now being digitized. They can deduct whatever amount of money they want out of your digits whenever they want. They can trace you whenever they want. You'll be at their mercy. God forbid we allow this to happen in America. This is absolutely Orwellian. I mean, it's talking about Big Brother looking over your shoulder at absolutely everything you do, every purchase you make, every place you go, um, every company you interact with, all of that would be reported back potentially to the government.